Hi, this is Jeff Howald. Today we're going to talk uh, about one of the many aspects of tone, which is the XY position. Uh, this is this is a little bit misunderstood, and it also falls into that category of listening. Most people, when they first start, and up till when they start recording, which means if they uh, join a band and they start recording uh, either in a studio or they buy uh, some type of uh, maybe a garage band or a i uh, movie type recording recorder but until they start hearing themselves they don't really ever listen to their tone and uh, this, this is really interesting to me. Even professional players. Now, I buy and sell a lot of banjos, uh, or have in my life. And one thing that I, I've noticed is whenever I have a banjo, most people, including professionals, when they pick it up, they immediately pick it up and start playing. Incidentally, when I do any playing, I'm going to actually stand up, and that way this would be equivalent to a close-up. So let's assume that I'm going to, uh, so when most people pick up the banjo, they just pick it up. Where um, if you really want to start getting into that new, that different instrument, even if it's only for a few seconds, what you do, you might... You might actually go through the banjo, or at least get set up. Take a few minutes. So, so if I'm going to play Cripple Creek, I get set up. I listen to the banjo, and you can do this while you're tuning it too, because invariably every banjo player wants to tune their banjo. So anyway, so you get set, and then, and while you're doing this, you're listening. So Cripple Creek again. that note right there. Now, to get the most tone out of an instrument, you have to be totally concentrating on the instrument. And of course, if I'm distracted trying to uh, talk about a video, that will detract somewhat from the tone. Well, okay, so the first thing is to get set. The second thing is what we call the X and the Y position, okay? Now, there are a lot of different X and Y positions, meaning uh, if it, it has to do with the placement of the right hand, okay? So let's, let's look at this. Uh, okay, so there's an X. We move up a quarter inch. There's another X. I'm going to look down at my banjo. There's another X. Now, I don't know when it becomes a Y, maybe halfway through, but each time you move your hand, an eighth of an inch, your banjo will actually sound different. See how that works? Okay, so how do you get a good sound? What you do, you listen. And if you watch some of the old videos of Earl Scruggs, when I first saw Earl Scruggs or some of the really good Scrug style banjo players, they looked sad. And I'm wondering, why are they playing the banjo? Why are they sad? And the reason was, in the case of Earl, he's totally in a zone and concentrating and listening to the, t the tone of every note. In other words, I can play this note here. I can, I can use a vibrato. Even though on a banjo, the uh, because it is a uh, uh, doesn't have a lot of sustain, you can still get different sounds out of it. Okay, now as I move my right hand, and we're going to shift here. Look at my right hand. Okay, as I move my right hand up to the X and Y, I notice I get different tones. 
Now, the way most XY is explained is you say, okay, this is the X and this is the Y, okay? So I'm, as I'm watching the beginning banjo player playing, he's going. And I think what he's doing, he's thinking, oh, it's probably time to go to the Y position. So he starts going there and then he goes back here. My fabulous tuner. It's always nice to be in tune. Okay, that's not how it happens. Okay, the way it happens is you're playing this note, and as you play, you shut everything out. The entire world is shut out, and the only thing that's happening is you're listening to the tone of that instrument. It depends on where you're playing. If you're playing lead, your hand will tend to be a little closer to the bridge. Whereas if you're playing backup, you want a much softer tone, so you're going to be going. Okay? So, if I were playing the choke like I've. It's the uh, sweet spot somewhere in this area. Now, if I play it towards the bridge, here's what it sounds like. Okay. Now, if I play it up here, here's how it sounds. Now, that's a really beautiful sound for backup, but you may want to get... You probably want to be in this area where you get some of the drive of being down here, or some of the sweetness of being up here. Okay, now your hands tend to move together. Now what that means is, and I'll back up here, as you're playing, as, as I'm playing down here around the nut, my right hand tends to be um, near the bridge. Now once again, every band's are slightly different, so uh, if you're going to hit a bullseye, you, once again, you listen for the sound. Now, as I move up, and I get up to here, and I go, you'll notice that playing right at the bridge uh, doesn't have as much tone as, okay? Also, depending on what instrument you're playing with and where you are, determine somewhat uh, where you're going to put your hand. If you're playing in a jam session, you've got a lot of people uh, and there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of stuff going on out there, uh, you're going to tend to play closer to the bridge and you're just going to murder it. Well, you're not getting much tone. Okay, so that's 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 that. Okay, so we've talked about playing here. Okay. 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 Now, let's, and we've talked about a choke right here. Okay. 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 Now, let's talk about as we go up the neck. Now, if you get much above the uh, 12th fret, if you get up into the 15th fret area, there's some unique considerations. One is the frets are actually closer together, okay? So if you look at, uh, let's say, my finger down here, there we go, you'll notice how much room there is. I move up to, let's say, the 17th fret, and there's virtually no room, and I move up to the 21st fret, I believe that's the 21st fret, anyway, and there's absolutely no room, okay? So sometimes when you're playing up here, and, and Earl Scruggs used to do this, you, you turn your uh, finger, and you even play with your fingernail. You see that? So my fingers are actually turned. The second thing that happens is 
the frets, because they're closer together, that, what that means is when I note this note right here, okay, once again, well, I used to call, I call this our Jed clamp it close up here. Okay, so what you're seeing here is when I play um, this string, the string is touching this fret right here, okay? Now, I, I really don't have the, the facility to do it, but if you'll look at your banjo and see how far above the next fret the string is, there's virtually no clearance, okay? Now, if the way your banjo is set up, if you've got super low action and this, not the fret you're noting, but the next fret is a little bit too, uh, too high, you'll get a buzz no matter what you do, okay? The second thing is you have to play the string lighter because it's closer to get. So if you start really pounding it, you're not going to get much tone. So it's a combination of playing lightly with the right hand and having your banjo set up properly. And you may, in some cases, if you're going to play a little harder, you might consider raising your action. So when you're playing up in this area, you play a lot lighter. Now what's interesting is when you're up in this area and you're playing rather softly with your right hand, it's almost as loud as playing down here and just killing it. Let's try that again. Okay, here we go. up here. What's well, interesting, I have a, uh, it's not a VU meter, but it's like a VU meter on this uh, camera, and I can see it as I'm talking, and the, okay. When I play that note there really hard first string and play this note really soft. This one's almost as loud. All right, so hopefully I haven't confused everybody. So as you're playing, This is just a rough draft uh, just to test the uh, recording equipment and uh, I'll go ahead and put it on YouTube and uh, we'll just see what happens. So here's the old remote bango.